Hello, thank you very much for joining me. Today I'm going to show you how to block an asymmetrical uh, peaked crescent shawl or a triangular crescent shawl. Um, this particular shawl is knitted in uh, Shoppel Saba Flower, which is a new yarn. It has 150 grams, so it's a slightly bigger ball, and it has 600 meters. So it's a nice uh, amount for a um, sort of medium sized shawl. So before I blocking it, I have soaked it in lukewarm water. Uh, I use a tiny splash of soak, which is a, a no rinse wool wash. You can also use eucalan or any other wool wash. Um, I soak it for about 10 minutes. You don't need to soak it any more than that unless you're knitting in silk. Silk will need to soak for a little bit longer. And then I roll it up into a thick towel to squeeze out as much water as possible. And I prepared my flat area. I'm using my table, dining room table. And I'm going to show you how you can block a slightly bigger shawl on a smaller table. This is a table that seats six people, so it's not a particularly big table. Um, but I can block a fairly big shawl on here. I'm going to use my uh, blocking mats. These are from Knit Pro. Um, you can get similar kind of things from uh, the ones with like jigsaw things, like letters in the middle for kids. You can get similar things from like hardware shops uh, and things like that. Um, and then I'm going to use my knit blockers, um, my knit pro knit blockers. So knit pro is called uh, knit is pride in the US, uh, knit pro here in the U here in Europe, um, and it's the knit blockers. I have two packs of those, and I'll probably need most of them. So I like these knit blockers. They are just plastic things with like uh, like a comb really with metal sp spikes. <laughs> Um, I like it for curved edges. It's really, really good for curved edges uh, where you can't use um, blocking wire so easily. You can get blocking wires that will curve. I have some of them. I've tried two or three different brands and I really don't like them. So I prefer to use uh, these nip blockers for curved edges. Uh, and then I'm also going to use my blocking wires as well. So I'm going to flip the camera around and point you down to the table so you can see what I'm doing and show you what to how I'm blocking the show. Yeah, so I have uh, changed the camera so that you can see what's happening on the table but you can't really see me so that's fine. So this shawl, the way I shape it, it curves around quite sharply around here. So I like to slip the first stitch of every row. Um, it may be that if you don't slip the first stitch of every row that it curves um, a little bit less. I haven't tried to knit the first stitch of every row because I like the way it looks with the slipped edge. Uh, but you can try knitting the first stitch of every row and see, um, but it looks any different, but you get like a slightly different shape, I'm not quite sure. But the beginning curves quite um, sharply, which um, I quite like. So um, I'm going to, so I just smooth it out so I can see like the rough shape of it. I need to make sure I've got a little bit of space here to pull out the, the points. So I'm going to start putting these in here. So I like to put them sort of fairly close together. Now I'm not going to stretch this top edge out too much. Just smooth it out a bit. Um, then this sort of slightly sharper bend here, I'm going to use a smaller one. So you can get the big ones or the half size ones. They come in a mixed pack so you get probably about a quarter of the small ones and the rest of the, the big ones. Okay, so that's, hang on, I'll put that one there. Take that one out, I can probably use a big one. Be careful about leaving gaps in between these because when we pull out on the other end, it's gonna, it could create a sort of scalloped edge, which I don't want to cross along this top edge. So you probably do need two of these. Okay, so I'm just going to carry on pinning across along the top edge here. This middle bit is fairly straight along this top edge and then it starts to curve again. So I'm going to just slide put on a few more blocking mats. The great thing with these blocking masks is that you can make them the size and shape that you need, which I quite like. I'm also going to need a couple at the top here, but I will finish pinning out this first. So it kind of curves quite sharply at the beginning, then it's sort of almost straight, and then it curves quite sharply at the end as well. 
I'm going to just lay this out so I can see right here what shape it's going to be. Then I can just pin it. So as you can see, I'm not stretching this top edge too much. When you do a shawl, um, you can quite often sort of make it stretch more width-wise or length-wise. You can't do both. Um, so I'd rather this have the depth than the extra length of the top here. Right, so I'm going to use some of these smaller ones just to go around this to just sharp the corner here. And then, so to do the top edge of this shawl, I've used nearly two full packs of the uh, Nip Pro Nip Lockers. You don't need to use these, you can just use pins if you prefer. So I'm not going to slide this up a bit. So to support this bit here, because I'm going to slide off the tape. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that way yet. So before I slide this off the table, I'm just going to pin this edge out here. So to do that, I'm going to use uh, pins. So I'm going to pin out this edge along here, this curved edge. Um, and then I can slide this actually off the table and do the rest of the shawl. Now this shawl has a uh, pico edging with a little bead on it. So I'm just going to grab each pico, each pico, put a pin in it, and then uh, pin it. It's quite nice with picos because you can easily see where you've got to pin it. Because you just go to where the pico is. So I'm not going to do it along this whole edge here because I know I can actually use a uh, blocking wire there, which makes it neater really. But I think that looks okay like that. So I'm going to, I may need to stretch it a bit more, but I'm going to do that later. So I'm going to slide that off the table and I'm just resting it on a um, chair. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to pin this bit out before I start doing the lower edge. So here along the the edge of the shawl, there is little sort of um, scallop bit, uh, bits. Basically every, I think it's every eight rows, I can't remember. Uh, every so many rows I cast off, I think there's three stitches. To create this sort of sawtooth edge, I guess it is more than scalloped. So I'm gonna pin all those out. And to make sure I don't stretch it too much here, I'm actually gonna just pin out a couple of the um, points down here. Got to be careful you don't stretch it too much on one side and then you can't stretch it anymore as much as you want on the other sections. So I'm just going to go around and just pin it a little bit like that. There we go. Then I can see roughly if I'm pinning it correctly here. So uh, you want to stretch it as much as you can. Now depending on the shape and size of the shawl, Sometimes I'll just pin it like roughly and then I'll go around and adjust it. Um, sometimes I'll try and pin it out, stretch it as much as I need to straight away. Sometimes I'll just stretch it a little bit and then I'll go back and adjust it. But this one, because I know what the shape's going to be like, I'm trying to stretch it as much as I need to straight away so I don't have to go back and adjust all the pins afterwards because there's quite a few pins. If I'm using blocking wires all the way around, then it's easier to go out and adjust it. So that feels quite tight. So I'm thinking I may have stretched these bit a little bit too much. I'm just going to relax these bit a little, this these a little bit, and then I'm going to grab some more blocking pins. So the blocking pins are also from Nick Pro. So the blocking pins are also from Nick Pro. Um, they are a bit stronger. You can use dressmaking pins, but they're a little bit stronger than dressmaking pins. Now these sawtooth kind of edges aren't that um, obvious. There's, there's only three stitches I've cast off to create them. So you have to kind of be, be careful you don't miss one by accident. Like here, I've just missed one. So I'm going to put some more blocking mats at the bottom here. Let's just slide this away a bit as well. Right, so I've put some more blocking, blocking mats in at the bottom here. I'm actually going to pin that edge, um, put a blocking wire through that edge. And just before it, I'm going to stretch it too much on one side, um, over this side, and then I'll be able to stretch this edge. 
So uh, below each pico on the cast off edge, which is what I'm doing now, there is a little hole underneath each pico. So I'm just taking the flocking wire through that hole. And I'll put my through through there as well. So these straight edges, it's really better if you can use blocking wires because it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to use blocking wires for this, you can just pin each point with a um, pin. But blocking wires make it a lot easier. So now I really want to stretch this as much as I can. And I need another blocking mat over here. Okay, so I want to stretch this as much as I can. I think I like about Pico is that it does create a little bit sort of deeper um, like curve, scallop. Okay, so I may have to go and adjust a little bit over in the corner here um, in a minute because I think I've pulled those a little bit too tight. But I'm going to pin out the rest of the shawl first and then see where we are. So I just, now I just need to pin out this section here. Because this is quite a stretch, it can be a little bit difficult to see just where my sawtooth points are. But you will be able to pull those out. So if you try and pull out the wrong section, it won't go into points. So if you're thinking, I can't see them, just kind of feel along the edge. You can also pin it out sort of slightly less stretched first, so you can see all these points easier. And then once you've got all of them, you can go around and adjust them all and pin them out more. So now I've pinned out everything that needs pinning. So now I just need to adjust it. So I um, don't know that you can see, but this is actually lifting a little bit, which means I've stretched it just a little bit too much. So I'm going to just go around here and release it a little bit. Little back buttons. better and then in the corner over there in the far corner oops the far corner is also stretched um a little bit too much so i'm going to just adjust this and go and um, check on that corner over there so we need to slide this back across the table oops so that end oh that's okay actually Okay, so I thought it was lifting at the far end there, but it's actually not when it's down flat on the table. So I'm happy with this now, the way this looks. It's all stretched quite nicely. So I'm just going to have a quick look around, just to make sure all the points around here are stretched evenly. And then that's it. Leave it to dry. So if you have any questions, um, do leave me a message below this video and I will do my best to answer. But the main thing to remember when you're blocking something is you want to stretch it as much as you possibly can. Uh, the more you stretch it, the better it is, especially if you're knitting with wool, because once you finish stretching it, it will relax, relax back a little bit. So I'm now just going to leave it to dry and then um, that's it. Put the name on the shawl and a link to the pattern below this video. And I'll also put a link to the yarn. The yarn is Zaba Flower from Shopple. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, my name is Annika Alice, and you can find all my details at www.yarnaddict.co.uk and all my links are below. Thank you.